Now these two, next one to look at is the bulbo urethral gland. Bulbo urethral gland. Okay, remember, gland, secretion, what are we going to secrete? Again here, major theme, there are two of them. Two of them is critical here. Two glands are going to be at either side of the urethra. They're at either side of the urethra, so they meet up with the sperm at the urethra, part of the two. And then these are going to be actually the very first glands to secrete. They actually don't uh, secrete directly with the sperm. They actually secrete at the time of arousal, initially, before sperm is even released, before the ejaculation has happened. So they're the first glands to secrete. Now, this might seem useless. Why would you secrete something that doesn't have sperm if everything I've been saying has been to either deliver sperm or make sperm? You're not delivering sperm here. You're secreting something that is not sperm. Well, the reason is because this is going to be a critically important pre-ejaculatory fluid that is secreted. Why would you need this? This is essentially a natural lubricant that the body, the male body, produces in the event of arousal. Initial arousal is going to cause an initial secretion called pre-ejaculatory fluid. This is a mucus-like fluid that is secreted. It is spermless, but it's still important because it also has an alkaline uh, basicity. It's very basic, and that's because it's going to be involved in neutralizing, and it does neutralize the acidic urine that may have been left over in the urethra. Urine in urethra, and also, it can make the vagina environment that's also quite acidic in the female a little less acidic because it is basic. Basic plus acidic means neutral. That's what we neutralize via the pre-ejaculatory fluid being released in this mucus-like form. Now, in addition, this is also going to be um, the idea of many unplanned pregnancies are the result of pre-ejaculatory fluid because sometimes some sperm also um, could be here even before an actual ejaculation. So a lot of the times, this is the reason the coitus interruptus method, coitus interruptus is uh, just a fancy Latin way of saying the pull-out method actually fails. The interruptus method failure is because of the fact that if you do not urinate between ejaculations, some sperm may still be left over in the urethra. If the urethra is the point at which we release pre-ejaculatory fluid, pre-ejaculatory fluid may be also combining with the leftover sperm, and this is going to then enter the female reproductive tract, unbeknownst to the person who's undergoing the copulation event, the male who's undergoing the copulation event, because oftentimes this pre-ejaculatory fluid is very hard to notice in terms of its actual secretion. It happens very quickly and very uh, early on in the time of arousal. So a lot of unplanned pregnancies are the result of this, even though the coitus interruptus method might have been utilized, because you did not block the initial sperm release through the pre-ejaculatory fluid, you might still have an unplanned pregnancy. So that's an interesting point of relevance to many people. Finally, the accessory glands. Overall, we combine everything. Sperm plus accessory secretions gives us our final product of semen. Semen, so we have seminal fluid, which is anything without sperm. Then we also have sperm. Sperm plus seminal fluid gives us semen. Semen is our final product. How do we get it? We make sperm, spermatogenesis. We combine it with accessory gland secretions. We get semen. Semen is our final product. It's a mixture of sperm and we can call the rest of it non-sperm or ejaculatory fluid. And the ejaculatory fluid is, of course, from these accessory organs. And the basic pathway that we exhibit here is uh, very simple. It is through uh, the following uh, acronym, I would say. So look at this acronym. It's very clever, I would say. Seven up. This is our pathway of semen. We're going to start at the testes, but specifically where are we going to start? The seminiferous tubule, semi T. Then we are going to mature. We're going to mature where? At the epididymis. Once we have matured at the epididymis, let's say we need to be released. We need to go through a tube. The tube nearest to the epididymis is our vas deferens. Once we have gone through the vas deferens, we have to meet up with uh, a ejaculatory duct. We have to meet up with some of the ejaculatory fluid. And so that's where we're going to go. The ejaculatory fluid is next. N actually stands for nothing. So ignore it. It stands for nothing. U would then stand for our urethra. 
and that's the eventual release. And then P, uh, many people can, uh, you know, use their imaginations for P. I'm just going to write X, Y, Z because uh, P can be either a derogatory term. Sometimes people utilize P as a point of clothing that might also be necessary. So this is our overall pathway of sperm. Know the accessory glands involved in the pathway. 7-Up um, is a good way to remember the pathway that semen and sperm takes throughout the male reproductive system.